So it's Friday, it's that time of the week again. Uh, it's in Morocco, you hang out time. And today I'm joined by Ali. How are you doing, Ali? I'm very well, thank you. How about you? Um, very good, thank you. Very, very good. Um, so as, as always, how we start these things, um, we try to do some introductions. So uh, how, did, how did you get involved with the Embraco community? Sure. Um, basically, I work uh, for a digital agency, Zone. It's called Zone, and, um, and they are based in London, mm -hmm. East Coast. Yep. And um, around five years ago, I one of my colleagues, Tim Clulu, mm -hmm. and uh, he introduced um, the previous company I used to work, the Umbraco, and uh, I managed to create a new blog uh, in two days. So I found it really easy and every. So, so that was your was, first experience with yes, the Umbraco was like, yes. I'm going to create a blog with this. Yeah, and then I managed to do it like in two days, learning and everything. And the whole site was ready in two days, and it was really good. Uh, awesome. The thing is, it's simple. The core. I mean, if you want to add features, you can add features. That's really good. Yeah, exactly. I um, so, so that was so, uh, so that was uh, learning about to create a blog. So how long ago was that? We talking five years ago. Wow. Okay, so quite a while ago now. Yeah, uh, version four point zero point two. Wow. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> been around the block a while. Yeah. So um, so how have you found the transition moving forward from, uh, say, obviously, XSLT in web forms and master pages, and obviously MVC stuff was introduced uh, and Razor, and then obviously now we've got all the way up to kind of version seven and the kind of new Angular JS uh, uh, back office. So kind it's of more... what have you thought? What are your thoughts? It's it's moving very fast and it's I think it's a, in a right direction. Mm -hmm. Everything gets better, faster, smoother, and easier to use, and I quite like it. And to be honest, when I started using Umbraco, even in version four, I have never ever touched any other CMS because I'm kind of fan of this, and that's what I've been doing for the past five years. And yeah, you're, you're probably yeah similar kind of background to me, but yeah, yeah. Uh, just. Like it and um, yeah. why 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 look elsewhere? It does what I need it to do and yeah, I can extend right. it easily. So. And I've built more than thirty websites so far, from very small to corporate, and also including CRM system, okay, intranet, everything with Umbraco, and it does everything awesome. I wanted. Brilliant. So uh, today you're going to demo a new package to us uh, yeah. that we released maybe a um, couple of weeks ago now. Uh, yes. Is it Conveyor? Is that yes, the right? Conveyor. Thanks to Anthony for the name. Um, <laughs> that got the best, <laughs> the most votes. Okay. So that's why we chosen that name. And uh, yeah. Um, so so should, do you want to maybe jump over and kind of uh, sure. tell us kind of what Conveyor is for people yes. who don't know? Okay. Okay, I've prepared some slides. Uh, let me share my screen first. Yep, no problem. Cool. Okay. Yep. So I'll start with uh, what is Conveyor. Basically, Conveyor is a, an Umbraco package that allows editor, developers, any person who uses the CMS to transfer content from one server or environment to another. And the tricky part is it does only content, so it doesn't deal with document type, data types, templates, none of them. I mean, it's okay. just content, so editors can use it, and that's why we have the CMS, to make everything very simple for editors. Yeah. And, and we wanted a simple interface, and I think this already has a simple interface, and, and when you install this uh, package, it will give you three sections. Mm -hmm. um, and the export part, the import, and check, check the compatibility. The export part reflects exactly the same content tree structure. So you, you are able to choose. The only difference is it will provide you a checkbox, so you can check which content you want to export. Mm -hmm. And the import part uh, comes with three options. You can say, I want to import everything and publish them all, or keep them unpublished, or keep it the same state as uh, origin. So if it was published in the in the environment that you exported from, it will be published. If it was unpublished in the new environment, it will right. Be. Okay. So it will keep the same status. Awesome. And, and what's the the compatibility? Sorry, just going. Oh, back the on. compatibility is basically just a report. It will go. Uh, there is a config file. 
mm -hmm. which you specify every single data types that you want. And let's say you have inherited a site from another company and you want to see if they have any custom data types or not. So every single data type, you can um, input it in, into the config file. Mm -hmm. and it will check if there is any extra bit. It will tell you, OK, this uh, data type is new. And is it a special data type or normal? I'll talk about what is a special data type. OK. And yeah, it just basically flags that. It doesn't do anything special. But it, it is kind of useful if you kind of create your own list and know which data types you usually deal with and which one they should be dealt with. And you need to write your own converter. So okay. it will kind of flag that. Nice. And OK, the question is, why do we need to transfer content? In Zone, we have minimum four different environments, like local, development, staging, production, which is the same as LifeSide. Yep. And keeping the content in sync in all these four different environments are really difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is one case, use case scenario. And the other one is like when you create a new section on the site. Uh, in our case, we had to create a new section uh, for courses, which we had 450 courses. And this, this was a completely new section, so it was only on staging. And the client had to approve all the copies to see how it looks. So we can't really test this on the live side. Yeah, of course. And, and uh, we had to create 250 courses on the staging. So we need, needed somehow to transfer these courses, these contents into uh, live side. And we actually used the conveyor to do it on the live environment as well. And the other use case scenario is front-end uh, developers like to work with the real content to adjust the margins, paddings, things like that to see the yeah. real image. And if it's easy, uh, they'll just back up the live database. I mean, not, I mean, export the content from with conveyor and then import it into uh, the live or sorry, the local or development or staging. Anyone okay. can do it. It just uh, it will because it's a new section. You can give people access to the new section to that section or not. Okay. And okay, so what are the solutions before the conveyor? These were our. I mean, these are our solutions. So mm -hmm. you can you could do, uh, either back up the live database and then restore it on your local yep. or staging side. Use career, use sync, content edition, create on Braco package, and others. So I'll go into the, each of these solutions. Yep. So each, each solution has a downside. If I'm going too fast, or if you have any no, 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 uh, no, this is uh, this is perfect. Um, so the downside of each solution is. Um, um, when you use live database, for example, the site that I have been working for almost a year now, mm -hmm. you have around 10,000 members. And imagine if you back up that database and share it across all these environments, you're kind of risking the sharing personal information. Yep. And, I mean, you could say, OK, you can go and manually delete members, but they also may have bookings. And then you need also to back up the, the media section. So every it's, it's very manual work, and it's not yeah. really possible, especially if you back up the, let's say you don't have any problem with that. You back up the database, clean all the data, and then you start creating a new section. And that might take, for example, one release might take two months. Mm -hmm. These databases, which is on the staging, is outdated yeah. from the live side because people are keep registering on the site. They do activities. They make new bookings on the live side. So you can't really restore the staging database on the live side. So yeah. that wasn't a solution for us. And the second one was career. Um, we, the career tries to be very smart and tries to find all the dependencies like macros, template, document types. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of, so it's not only content. So we wanted something very simple. And also, I'm not sure how the career works with custom data types like view component, dams, and basically any other custom data types. And um, the other solution was using content edition. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I've used it very quickly, but the concept is just uh, basically as soon as you publish, it dumps an XML file into the disk, and it has exactly the same drawbacks of uh, career, so it doesn't really work with the view components, with the custom data types like that. No. And um, so, so that's one thing, and the other 
disadvantage of that is you don't have any control over the dummy content, so we use our staging side mm -hmm. for the QA, so the QA might put a very long title, just dummy content basically, yep. and then we don't want to export that, we, and we don't want that file to be written on the repository, and I'm not sure how the using works with the media uh, as well. Okay. So, and the last one, which is the Umbraco package, in this developer section, you can go and say, okay, I want to create only content. But uh, this, this is very, very simple. Yeah. Uh, I kind of reuse the same code from the source code. That's um, the great advantage of uh, working with an open source uh, CMS. Yeah. So you can see how things are done. Mm -hmm. So I kind of mix some of the code, which I wanted to use, and changed it quite a lot yeah. to make it uh, work. But um, the drawback of this approach is and when you, s you you can only select one content at a time, and it will select everything beneath that. So still, that's very limited. And if you have special data types or reference data types uh, like content picker, media picker, or multimetry picker, why do I call these special or reference data type? Because they are referencing an ID. They don't store the value. So when you select another page through the content picker in the database, the ID of the, that page is selected. Uh, I'll show you an example in a bit. And also, it doesn't export media, so it's not a good solution for us. But how does Conveyor export the content? Uh, any questions so far? No, 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 no. So, no, I, I would definitely agree in terms of we've tried uh, probably all of those solutions that you've talked about so far, uh, and we've kind of mixed and matched. Um, so yeah, we're still kind of trying to find uh, a perfect balance. Um, sure. So I, currently, I don't think there's any perfect solution. Uh, yeah, that's that's why I have to create this package to to just deal with the content. Um, okay, so the way Conveyor works, it generates an XML file, and it stores all the content and references, and also it goes through every properties of a page, and mm. exports them one by one. But the great advantage of this is you can interrupt this process and say. If you are, when the package is trying to export a page yep. and gets to a property like multi notary picker, do something special. You can create your own converter here. So, As in, we're talking a, a converter for specifically for conveyor, not a converter, say, a, uh, what's the what's the correct terminology? Like an uh, I published, um, uh, yeah, com not, like a data type converter. Uh, yes. Yes, so something least, totally uh, different. Yes, it's totally different. Basically, when the conveyor tries to export the content, and we we can kind of stop the whole process and say, if you see Warren data type, for example, mm -hmm. then do something else. So you can manipulate the data in the in the between. So you can plug in anything you want, and that gives you, you the flexibility. So it it basically the conveyor can work with any data type on the planet. So because you can define your own converter. Okay, so I presume the converter would have to live at the the other end uh, that's kind of receiving or importing it, so to speak. Yes, uh, they yes. can then convert it back to however that's, it needs to be stored. That's correct. Cool. So the, the, so there is this config file, mm -hmm. and you can specify those special data types here in, in that in that config file. And for example, in, in in the case of media, when we are trying to export a media. Uh, Let's say a page has a multi uh, a page has a media picker, and an image is a media item is selected. Mm -hmm. So what we can, we can say we can say okay whenever you reach to media picker data type, yep. export the file as well as do something special about it, and I'll show you an example in a bit. Awesome. And, uh, the, and the result will be an, a zip file. So it will create a zip file which contains one XML file. Every content, I mean, which representing the content and all the references, mm -hmm. and every single file that are referenced, um, even if it is in a in a rich text editor. Okay, cool. So this is an example. Yep. This is uh, in Umbraco six. Uh, I've got this page, which is a type of course. Basically, it's representing a course. All these um, properties with a green tick next to them. Yep. They represent the exact value that is being stored in the database. For example, for the course reference code, that's just the text. Yep. That's the same value is stored in the database. But if I go 
to this one, frequency of sessions, it's a drop down list, but the value, you, you see Monday here, but the value that is stored in the database is 1157. Mm -hmm. And then when, what is the problem? Why the ID is a problem, let's say, because uh, some people might not know about this, but uh, so when you, when you try to export uh, this content and when you do an import, you don't get necessarily the same ID. No. So in this so case, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why you need a conversion and that um, basically a plugin for every special reference data types. Mm -hmm. And it's the same case for multi node tree picker. In this case, I've selected I've, um, the, the ID of 10,074 is stored in the database where you see this. So when you export or when you create this node, mm -hmm. the CMS, this might not get the same ID. That's why the relationship will break. Yep. What uh, there is a magic or a column in the database. Voodoo really magic, is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, there is this column called grid. Uh, although you don't have access, you can't control the ID in case of import export, mm -hmm. but you can control the grid. So that's where the magic happens. You can say, okay, the old content grid is X, Y, Z, and then uh, when you import it, you can override that X, Y, Z as a new grid. So basically, this old content is being mapped to the new content with the grid, not with the ID. Okay. Um, so this is an example of the the config file. So as you can see, um, this is the grid. Every data type has its own grid, yep. and it's unique. And so if so if I, if uh, I have a, a data type, how would I easily go and find what that grid is? Uh, if you create your own one, mm -hmm. then um, you you have to define the, this grid. But uh, I think you need to have a. Um, I think if you yeah if you export if you use the export function for the first time, mm -hmm. it will dump the grid of that data type in the in, in the XML file. So okay. you can see that's one way. Yep. The other way is, is just go to the uh, database, look it up, and find the grid, which is not really easy. No. And but these grids are the same. I mean, these are the built-in data types in Umbraco. So for example, I've created my own converter for media picker. Mm -hmm. And for, for the same for multi node tree picker, content picker, drop down list, and rich text editor. You might ask why rich text editor? Because rich text editor stores text. But yep, and like a string to yeah. images. Like yeah, exactly. Well, like. you might have reference to an image, you might have a reference to a file, mm -hmm. or you might have an internal link. So all of these needs to be taken care of. And okay. Um, so this is the other bit, which is other data types. So I'm sure these data types store text. So what I do, I, I specify every all of this in the, in the config file. So you can add the ones that are in the safe list and the ones that are special. And then when you run that compatibility, check compatibility, it will flag the ones, the data types that are neither in the special types and other. Okay. So that will be useful. So if you get a website from another company, you would exactly see, okay, this is, what is this data type? What does this, this do? Is it just storing a text or does it store a reference? Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges for, to creating this uh, uh, package conveyor? The special types, the special data types are the challenge, like content picker, media picker, they all store IDs, multi node tree picker, drop down list, rich text editor. And as you can see, in the rich text editor, when you have internal link, this is the value that is being saved into the database. So it says yep. local link and the ID of the page. Again, when you see the ID, that means that it's not going to work because you don't, you don't. There is no guarantee that you get the same ID for the same content yep. in a new environment. So you not, you have to um, deal with grid. So how does um, conveyor solve this problem by basically creating a plugin or I would call it data type converter. Yep. And you just plug it in into the uh, application by in in the config file. You, you just specify it in the config file. Mm -hmm. The conveyor by uh, version six and seven comes with uh, I mean supports all the built-in data types like content picker, media picker, multi node tree picker, so many pickers. Yeah. yeah <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just gonna. 
quickly explain what is the concept behind these converters and why do we need these converters. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the case of Quantum Picker, uh, so when you create your own converter, you need to implement this iData type converter interface. Yep. That will give you two methods, which is import and export. And, and then you say, OK, when you want to export the value, what should I do with this? In the case of Content Picker, you want to convert the ID into the grid. Because yep. ID doesn't make any sense in the environment. But the grid, you have the control over it. You can override it and say, OK, my new content has this grid. Mm -hmm. And the same when you are importing. So you can say, OK, when I import it, I, you look up the same content by grid rather than the ID. So you find the same content and then assign the ID into the property. Because okay. the content picker in the database needs an ID. It doesn't deal with the grid. I heard there might be some sort of database changes in that terms. If everything works based on the grid, we, we don't have this problem. Yeah. At the moment, we do, and we need to solve it. Uh, in the case of multi-node tree picker, um, the, data, the value that has been stored in the database is comma-separated IDs. So mm -hmm. again, we do the same. So whenever we see ID, we convert it into grid. grid. Yep. And then when we import this, we convert the grid into ID. We don't actually convert the grid. We, we look up the content by grid, and yep. then find the ID, and then. Where it matches this grid, then this is the yes. one that we know yes. is the ID for this actual item. Yes. And if you don't like the um, default implementation of conveyor, you can override it. You can just comment that line. It doesn't work. Um, and then you can say, OK, instead of running this DLL, I'll just go back. Yeah, so and implement my DLL. own yeah. namespace and type. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's why it is. Uh, very useful. It is customizable and can work. Cool. Um, so this is an example for the rich text editor. So what do we do when we reach? I mean, this is basically the concept uh, that I have written for every different special types built in the built in special data types. Yeah. Such as rich text editor. So when so in the case of import export, we find all image uh, tags in yep. the rich text editor. And then by using media service dot get media by path, we find a media item. Mm -hmm. Then so now we have the media item. Okay, then, so then you can get the GUID. Yes, we get the GUID, and then we attach the file into the dependent node. I'll explain what is dependent node a mm -hmm. little bit later. But basically, there is this collection. Then you say, okay, when whenever you see a reference, for example, in my article page, if I have a reference to a category which is a node, then I will assign that ID or the um, content or that category to the dependent node, and the dependent node automatically will export that for me. So it knows if it is a, I mean, you specify if it is a document object or if it is a media object. OK, nice. So in this case, this will become a tag. So when you export, you don't see a slash media slash ID slash uh, my image.jpg anymore yep. because I have replaced that with a grid. And when I want to import, I will do exactly the same. So you just do the, literally just do the reverse. Yes, and then uh, find the images, image tags, and then find a grid, find um, find a grid by regex, and then retrieve the media item by grid, and then get the path of that image and replace this bit the source attribute by the mm -hmm. path of the image. Yep. And, and and that's it. And OK, this is an example of a data type converter. So this is for media picker. So I this didn't... is converting uh, a GUID then? Uh, yes. the, sorry, the ID into the ID GUID, GUID and, and back then, out the other way. Yes, yes, that's right. So um, I'll just check the property value. If this is a property uh, object of Umbraco. Yep. So it will give you the value. I'll just say, OK, if it is not null and if it is not empty, then yeah. Let's uh, do some stuff on it. It's integer, yeah, exactly. And then, um, and then I get the media object. And if the media object is not empty or null, mm -hmm. yeah. and then if there is any file associated with that, then yeah. I would like to export it. And instead, instead of saying media.id, I'm getting the key, which is it's the GUID. Yep. Yes. And I'm saying, OK, now, because I have a file,
this is kind of a dependent node. So I'm going to add this ID of that media into the de dependent node. And I say, okay, the object type is media. Okay. And then the, the dependent node automatically knows how to deal with that. So all you have to do is just pass it to, to the dependent node, and it, the dependent node does the magic for you. Uh, and in the case of import, I'm checking if the, because when I'm importing, we only get XML file. So in the XML, I check if the value is not null or empty, and then um, I create a new grid, search that media by the grid, mm -hmm. and then the ID, and then uh, I get the ID of that, and then I assign the ID to the property. Okay. So you might ask how you make sure that you will get that ID. Um, or this exists, actually, when you s search by uh, get by that grid yep. for that media. How you can gu guarantee that there, this media, ex media exists on the system. Um, this bit is a little bit tricky. And basically, what we do is... Um, when I import everything into the system, mm -hmm. so it goes through every single page, import yep. them one by one, regardless uh, of if they have any special data types or not. But it doesn't import the, if the page that has a special data type, like content picker, it doesn't assign any value to it. Okay. So it imports all the pages once, and then goes back again and says, okay, now I'm gonna Look deal with that. all all the pages that has had any sort of special data types. Mm -hmm. So because that all the contents are created, so there is guarantee that you you are going to get the same. Uh, when, when you look up by a grid, you will yep. find it. That okay. Does it make sense? No, no, that makes sense. So yeah, so, you you obviously import all the content first. Uh, any special data types, uh, you just kind of skip over for the first yes. time loop over the second time and render these kind of uh, special uh, data type converters and run the import rules on these. That's right. Yeah. Um, one question. Yes. Just, uh, so if I've chosen a media item in a picker and that media item has some custom properties, say, like uh, I've added an extra text box field to the media yeah. Image media, and it's got say like uh, let's say alternative it, text. Yeah. Alternative text, yes, yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, and yes. I put I put in uh, a different value in, in say in one environment. When uh, it's picked, say from this picker, would it also take the value of the alternative? Text? Yes, yes, it does. That's that's the magic of the dependent nodes because what it does, it says, okay, now the, when you are adding this media mm -hmm. to the dependent nodes, now that is being considered as an Separate node, so that so go and grab me the media node and all its properties. Yes, that's true. Awesome. And also, it does something else. Um, it basically, if the media is in, let's say, level five, and that media has got four parents, yep. it will export all those four parents as a folder if they are a folder. Mm -hmm. So to keep the same structure, so in your staging environment and live environment, you will so. have exactly the same structure, and everything is tidy and organized. So right. but that's not the case for the content. So if one, let's say, if I go back. Mm -hmm. So in here, I've got a reference to, to this ages 5 to 7. Yep. If I export this page, this ages 5 to 7, this node will be exported, but not this one. If this doesn't exist, this if the parent of this page doesn't exist, yep. it doesn't go further. Because otherwise, if you have uh, uh, one node, which is kind of referencing all the website, it's going to every time you're going to export one node, it, it will export the whole site. So it only carries on one level. So okay. if within this age five to seven, I had another reference to another page, it won't it won't keep it because your intention is to export only this page, and every relation into this in in this page needs to be right. Yep. That's why we, we export this file, this this export this node. Sorry, and then if if it doesn't find a parent, it will just dump it on the root level. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. So you import. So that's that. Okay. And 
we almost somehow covered this, but you can you can use uh, you can write your own converter for custom data types, and that's what I have done for uh, U component URL picker. So it's the same scenario when you select the content. This is this stores an ID as you can see here. Mm -hmm. ID is four 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 seven. So this is the date the value that has been stored in the database. And when I ex export it, uh, this is the actual tag, and then I'm exporting the grid here. Okay. That's why I can look it up again and then create. Um, um, th this is this is kind of tricky, but basically I convert this grid into ID and then change this ID inside the JSON string. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what are the features uh, of a conveyor? It works with Unbracket six and seven. Uh, version one works with six. Version two works with seven. Awesome. Um, it does the content, transfer contents, not document types, data types, uh, or templates. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's customizable and works with any data type. Um, and also, it's open source, so you can change it. You can f improve it in any way you want. And kind of contribute back to the product. Awesome. Yes. And uh, it's uh, demo time. Fantastic. Cool. Any questions so far? No, 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 no. Um, I think um, what was, uh, what was uh, no nothing that springs to mind. Uh, my <laughs> mind's gone. Mind's gone blank. Cool. So it was either too difficult or too easy. <laughs> so I'm not no, sure no, 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 no. It's, it's, it uh, looks awesome. Um, Glad to hear that. Uh, just add a little bit to that. I started this package almost um, seven months ago. Okay. And in terms of uh, amount of work uh, that we have put into that, it's nearly 25 working days. So it's as big as that. Awesome. And there were a lot of challenging parts which we managed to solve it. And it, it kind of does the job, at least for us. <laughs> I yeah, hope it will be useful for the other people. It, um, it looks fantastic. OK, so I've prepared a demo here to make sure that I will cover everything and nothing is missed, and the demo won't go fail. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Scary> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so shall we just run through it and talk sure. whilst, it, uh, whilst it goes? Uh, basically, in here, I've got two environments. One is development, and one is staging. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import one section into staging, from staging uh, to development. As okay. you can see, this let's cook. Uh, hello? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, as you can see, this let's cook section doesn't exist on the state on the development. Mm -hmm. It has so many cores. That's exactly what I was talking about. 250 courses. And this is the structure. So this is the same um, thing. So we have like frequency of session, mon Monday, and then the age group. So we have multi. So this is drop down list, special data types, yeah. and also uh, multi node tree picker. In this case, we also have using DAMP. I have also written a converter for DAMP, which takes okay. care of that. And But these are all from RACO 6. And so this is a data section with the repository for age groups and the regions. Yep. So that was kind of what the multi-node tree picker is kind of referencing yes. in this right. section. Yep. Yep. Uh, I have installed the conveyor on both environments. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, this is the tree structure, exactly the same. Uh, basically, this is a replicated version of the content tree. Yep. It has checkbox, so you can select uh, the pages, if the pa if a node has a children, it will come up as a folder. Otherwise, it will come as a document um, icon. Yep. Mm -hmm. So in here, I'm just going to select that new section with all its children. And this tree works directly with the database. That's why every time you click on a node, it thinks because it sends another request uh, okay. and gets the, the rest of the tree. So I'm selecting everything here. So all these courses. As you can see so far, 20 nodes are selected. Yep. So you obviously now need to yeah, select the data that it relates to. Yeah. So in this case, what I'm going to do to prove that the one level dependency will work for content mm -hmm. is I'm going to only select the parents. 
which is in this case the, the actual folder. As you can see, I didn't ex select any course, yep. any, any any region or any age groups. Yes. Yeah. So 22 nodes selected so far. I'm going to export that. So you've given it like a file name to create the zip. Yes, that's the file name for the zip. This is the XML file, and these are the images that were referenced. Yep. And this is my staging, so there is no age group or region. Yep. And the let's cook section is not there. So I'm going to. Yeah, in here, as you can see, three options unpublish all pages, same as origin, publish all. In this, uh, I'm going to select the same as origin. So this is my content. Import it. So 22 pages should be created. Where are 25? I think it was 22. Yeah, I think it was 22. Yeah, it does all those loops. It goes through every single data types and then yep. sort everything. It says 25 here. I need to know why, but there is. Oh, okay. Because I'll tell you why. Right. Okay. 22 plus, and you'll see. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. I think I figured it out. But yes. Yeah. These are the three extra pages. So because okay, so the children that it relied on. Yes, exactly. So the age five to seven, eleven. A to 11, and also the region, because they were used or referenced in the actual content, and we didn't, we forgot to select them. They also been exported. Fantastic. So this is the same structure. Everything the same. So as you can see, this image is a damp data type. Uh, Mm -hmm. So the you've managed to kind of convert it back yes. and update uh, the media yes. and the reference and things like that. And also the region same, multi node to picker. I mean, the only things you should worry about if a property or a data type uh, a data type stores ID, which is the case for image, but uh, all other texts like text strings you don't really have to worry about because they are just storing text and and I, I can presume the same with the, the Google Map one because yeah. it's it essentially stores a, a text string there's yes, no kind of true. ID or relation back to any other nodes that it needs to look up yes that's true cool and that's the same page so the drop down list Monday worked awesome and so did the relation to the uh, yeah the the course yes. age. Yes, I think I kind of forgot to explain that. But basically, in the case of drop down list, mm -hmm. you can't really convert the ID to grid because there is no grid. It's it's just a value. Yeah. Um, so what you have to do is when you export in the drop down list, we say okay, I stored the value Monday. Yep. And then when you want to import, you look up. By that value. Okay, so you look and up by a text value. Yes, so that's it. And find the string in the the other end. Yes, and then get the ID of that, and then store the ID into the property. So this time I'm going to select another section. I'm mm -hmm. going to do a little bit. Um, I'm I'm going to change the content basically here. So I'm going to select all. The children's, but not the parents. Okay. To prove that the grid things work, because if we import, they should be under the same parents. Okay. Yes, I see what you mean. So re-import. Uh, so choose a different section under the Let's Cook, but ensure that uh, yes. we kind of don't overwrite uh, the GUID or the ID reference uh, for the existing sections. Yes. Yes, that's right. So this time, I didn't select the Let's Cook. Mm -hmm. 21 node is created, I mean, selected. Yep. The zip file is created again, so I'm going to import it. This time, I'm going to leave it unpublished and see what, we, what is going to happen.
So it was 21. So 18 pages created because those are new. Mm -hmm. As I recall, we had two age groups, one region, which were previously created, but now they are updated. Does okay. Yep, yep. Yeah, okay, cool. So the update was maybe text content or something like that? It's just because we don't know these content exist or not, so we, we have to export it anyway, and if they exist, we, we overwrite every single property, so we do the same. Okay. So here you go. So everything is imported in the same parent. It's good. Fantastic. And everything is unpublished. So we should have a new section as well that's yeah. also unpublished. To be when I was creating this uh, uh, demo, I, I forgot to, to select the published. Uh, I mean, same as original. That's why they're unpublished. So what this is, this might happen to anyone. So I thought, okay, this is good use case to to do the next demo. Yeah. Which, uh, okay, as you can see again, the images are there. Everything is there. So what I'm going to do now again, I'm going to import the same content which I just done it now, but with with a different state. Okay, so the same as origin, so you're yes. just going to say uh, ensure um, whatever. Yeah, it's exactly replicating the staging. And it doesn't create a duplicate content. It's, it was 21. So no, we should have like 21 updates. Then. Yes, that's right. In this video, I didn't cover the media, but in the next one, I. I will explain about the media. As you can see, the media are, are getting updated as well. Cool. So everything now is published. Fantastic. And there is no duplicate content. So you can do it as many times as you want. Yeah, no, that's uh, really, really useful. And it's very safe. I mean, it doesn't really change anything. So, ah, that was uh, one question. Uh, so, say you were saying earlier about uh, document types um, not being transferred and things like that. So, if I transfer, uh, so I've created a new section on dev which has new doc types and things like that. Yes. I okay. choose to export those and then try to import them on a site that doesn't have those document types, what's yeah. going to happen? You will get an error and says, OK, this document type doesn't exist. Awesome. And also, sometimes you get it for properties as well. So you said this property doesn't exist. So you know which property is missing. Brilliant. No, as long as there's a nice visual cue to uh, tell me why or what is missing, then yeah. um, that, that makes perfect sense. So I think, uh, yeah, this video is just, uh, that's it really. I'm just comparing the same content to make sure that everything is exactly the same. No, that's a uh, really, really nice demo. Um, OK, so I'm going to, to the next. I think there is some sort of, let me just double check if there is anything else here. Oh, OK, there is one more thing. Uh, OK. It's basically this uh, content um, URL picker. Yep. Yeah, I'm on dev environment, so the URL picker also got the same value as the staging site. OK, yes, so you picked FAQ, and it also uh, yes. picks uh, FAQ at the other end. Yes, that's right. So basically, that's the converter for URL picker. That one works as well. Nice. So all of these pickers that you're demoing or the converters yeah. for these pickers, do they yeah. ship out of the box? Uh, the thing is, uh, all the built-in data types are out of the box, yep. but I have the DLS on the live side, uh, on, on our. So you can download the DLLs that are relevant to you and then dump it into uh, the bin folder yep. or references. And then uh, you just, uh, every single data type uh, is commented out in the config file. So you, you have to uncomment it, for example. If, you have, if you're using DAMP, you just download the DLL, mm -hmm. uh, dump it into the bin folder, and then go to the config file, uncomment the the damp um, line. The, the OK, cool. So this is this one. And then I'm going to show you the second video, which is uh, kind of very exciting. This is the first time I'm demoing this. No one else knows about this feature. No one else has tried it. OK. Uh, this is kind of a surprise. And uh, here you go. OK, this is uh, my blog. 
uh -huh. which is in version 6.1.2. Okay. Yeah. And I write only two blocks per day per year, so I don't have many content. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> so these are these are all the content. As as you can see, for 2011, we've got the Ombraco five and <laughs> for <Yeah>. that seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so 28 uh, nodes selected. This is the entire content of my site from mm -hmm. Ombraco six. So this is the XML file. So so far everything is the same. I mean, as I explained before, and this is the the structure of the XML file. It's very similar to the uh, um, the Ombraco one, yes, but so with like so many crash. extra yes, with so many extra properties. Okay. okay so the only thing is, which is different here is that I've exported the um, the content from Ombraco six. And I'm going to import it into Unraco 7. So I've got a local version of Unraco 7 with the same document types. Okay, and the same properties. properties. Yep. Yes, the same properties as well as the, the same templates. Yep. Yep, so it's definitely so, in. Yes. <laughs> Nothing in the bin folder. <laughs> I'm yeah. not cheating. It's like a magician. <laughs> nothing up my sleeves. Nothing yeah. up. <laughs> okay. Cool. So yeah, we've got the same document types. So I'm going to conveyor section. It looks exactly the same because uh, I built this con package for Umbraco seven, six first, and then just shipped it in the seven. So I didn't break any. It's not Angular. So this is the zip file. I'm selecting the zip file here. Yep. The 28 uh, nodes uh, were selected. Mm -hmm. So we should, I mean, the package should create 28 nodes in Unraco 7. Awesome. I mean, you can do this for Unraco 4. So you can, there is no, nothing out there yet, but uh, you can just uh, change the service layer of this uh, package and then. Uh, export content from Umbraco 4 and then import it into Umbraco 7. Mm, so fantastic. The eight page created, mm -hmm. five media items created, four updated. This is a little bit tricky, but it's because of the uh, iteration that we have to do for the special data types. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to reload the notes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Ah, la la. Everything. Is here, so the content picker, uh, the page redirect is a content picker, so that worked. I've done a little bit of tweak because the grid of the content picker in Umbraco 7 is different than the grid in Umbraco 6. So I've, what I had to do just add the grid of the um, content picker uh -huh. into the config file, but with the same implementation. So I've got two two grids, which is referencing the same. DLL for the content picker converter. Okay. I'll show yep. you a bit. So as you can see, the home page is uh, unpublished in the source, and in here is yeah. unpublished as well. So exactly the same structure. Everything is uh, all the properties like um, date. Simple rich, uh, rich text editor and also tag. Okay, awesome. Now I've also got this. So I'm going exactly the same page. So everything the same. Date. Then this is the old ID. Cool, yeah. Uh, and also, I presume the old ID is literally just for this demo purpose. Obviously, you're not using it. The, yeah, the, the old ID is just kind of show us what's going on. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's just a property. But to be honest, uh, the reason I'm using it is because of the uh, what is it called? Discuss. Yep. Because I shipped my on record four vlog into six. So in the uh, discuss, I was referencing the ID, and the ID when I imported it, it was changed. 
uh, okay. problem, so I had to keep the track of that. Yep. That's why I had that property. So the reason I'm, I'm going to through this uh, page is because the, in the inside the rich text editor, I've got three images. Yep. In Umbraco 6, and if I go to Umbraco 7, of course, ah, nice. everything is being kept exactly the same. Basically, the implementation was exactly the same for Umbraco 6 and 7. So I'm going to the same page on my local machine. So that's my blog. Fantastic. Everything Looks here. Identical as it did before. Yeah, I'll go on now to the live site. Awesome. Exactly the same. And also, I think now I'm going to show you the media um, section. Mm -hmm. To show you how it has kept the, the same structure. So let me reload notes. Yeah. So here you go, the same structure here. Yeah. If I go to live side, media section, same. You might ask why you don't get that external files because, as it names <laughs> implies, it basically these these files are not used internally within the pages. Yep. I'm just using them as a to share it with my friends. So that's why because they're not referenced, they're not created. Simple. Very very nice. Awesome. So that means that basically you can uh, ship from a block of six to seven, four to seven, four to six, whatever you want. And if let's say your document type is changed, and you don't want to say, OK, you, you can also map them. Because the, the package is open source, you can customize it any way you, want, you like. Uh -huh. And and also, uh, you can write your own converter and say, OK, if the U component, if you have a property which is using U component, and you don't have it in the um, block of 7, yep. but instead you have something else, or you, you just want to dump it, you can just customize the package and say, OK, if the document type doesn't exist, don't throw error. Just carry on. Just only match the document, the, the properties that exist. Okay. Nice. And uh, at the end, I would like to thank uh, all my colleagues who helped me through uh, finish this package: Andy, Neil, and Bobby. Excellent. And you can find a link uh, on our own Braco, uh, for the package and also the source code. Brilliant. So no, no. I think I think you've covered. It's been quite a, a detailed uh, kind of look and demo um, at uh, Conveyor, and it's been. Uh, um, I think yeah, you've covered near enough everything that maybe eventuality. Um, Simon Steed uh, posted a question, but I think we he, you covered it already. Really, uh, he I think he must have asked it quite early on. Uh, he asked, does it cover media? Uh, and obviously, we found out uh, it certainly does. Okay, but uh, that re reminds me of something. It's a good question. So the roadmap for this package is to add a separate section, so it will give you uh, an opportunity to export only media items if you want to. So okay. you select the media, so you would get exactly the same tree structure. Say, okay, export this, and it would create your zip file, and then you could import the same, but without content. Mm, that's nice. nice. So that's on the roadmap for... Yes. Next, next version or next point release or whatever. Yes, yes, it is. Awesome. Very, very nice. Um, so uh, if I'm a uh, package developer and I've built my own custom data type, um, maybe it's worth me spending some time going through the documentation or examples that you've got here in Conveyor and yes. maybe shipping an extra DLL or something that, uh, that could work. Um, my data type that I've built uh, to make sure it works with Conveyor. Yes. I mean, you can contribute to this package. It's open for contribution, to be honest. Anyone uh, is more than welcome to contribute. And uh, But sometimes the, the converter that you or anyone else writes, it can be very, very specific, or it can be very generic. OK. That's why I have covered all the built-in data types. But for example, the what was that big? I, I didn't do many. Uh, website in Umbraco 7. So what was that? Um, archetype, OK, for example, yes, archetype. archetype. Yep. So in that one, I mean, you can write your own converter for that. But I couldn't find a way to, to write it very generic. Uh, so very specific to, to, yes. to each implementation of the site. Yes. For example, you could, I mean, if you want to do that, you can say, 
okay, if you get to um, archetype data type, mm -hmm. then if I have the alias of, I don't know, file name, yep. is referencing definitely to a media, so in that case, do something special. If the property name or the data type name is different, then just ignore it or things like that. I mean, exceptional things you can define. And but there is no way to make it very generic. No, no, that's yeah. Like you say, it's hard. Uh, each site is built differently, and uh, yeah, to like you say, to build it generically is it's going to be yes. um, near to impossible. So, but uh, no, thank you, uh, Ali, for spending the time with us uh, no this afternoon and uh, demoing conveyor. But um, yeah, so if anyone wants to kind of get uh, get a hold of it, it's over on R and Braco, and um, yeah. Uh, go and download it now. Cool. Excellent. Thanks so much for time. Yeah, no problem, Ali. And um, have a good uh, weekend, and hopefully see you, you soon. Too. Sure. Excellent. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.